What's going on, everybody? My name is John. I'm here with Ryan Hunt with Bloom, and we're here in the Bloom Room, and today we're going to talk about how Bloom got started. So I want you to take us all the way back. How did Bloom get started? What was your involvement with algae? How did, how did it all begin? It was the mid-2000s. So we were funded by the Department of Energy at the University of Georgia to find ways to produce biofuels from plants. And so a lot of work at that time was looking at corn, soybeans, and palm oil as a source of fuel for our supply chain. And what we found with those situations is that these plants, they grow slow and they take a lot of resources. In fact, in many times, they require major fertilization. And that fertilizer can run off of the farms and lead to harmful algae blooms. So our idea was to use the algae blooms directly because they grow 10 to 100 times faster than plants and trees. Yeah, and if you're going to use something for biofuels you need to make sure it's on demand pretty much you want to grow it as fast as possible and you want to do so in a way that's not impactful on the environment so by using algae we are able to restore the environment through mitigating and intercepting pollution from factories from utility companies and use that pollution as the fertilizer to grow the algae so now you found this other resource for biofuels how are you getting how are you making biofuels out of algae so the algae can contain oils however what we found was that as the algae grows faster particularly when it's in this bloom state when it's dividing like crazy multiplying like crazy we do not get the oil content instead what we found was that the algae was dominated by protein mm. and protein you might be familiar with it's it's a critical part of our diet that's right uh, it's actually made up of polymer chains of amino acids so algae is a superfood it's used in smoothies yeah, I was about to say you use it in protein shakes all the time you can go to smoothie king and go get some smoothie with algae in it you can get spirulina chlorella there's lots of famous species out there that are very rich in nutrients the problem is is the type of algae that we were looking at we were growing with industrial wastewater or agricultural wastewater, or it was an uncontrolled bloom that might have been harmful to the environment, and we don't really know what's in there. Mm. So those types of materials weren't suitable for being introduced into the food chain. So we looked at ways to use the algae in industrial processes, such as plastics and materials, as a replacement for petroleum-based polymers. So that was when I joined forces with our co-founder, Mike Van Drunen, and his background was in packaging, engineering, and polymers. Mm. And so he was very motivated and passionate about finding sustainable solutions in the plastic space and had customers looking to improve the sustainability of their products. And so for us, it was uh, an easy transition. We started the company Algix in 2010 with the intent of commercializing this really research at the university and turning it into a commercial enterprise where we can convert pollution into a sustainable ingredient for use in consumer products. Yeah, and obviously plastic is everywhere. Every product that we buy, that we use, it's in the packaging. It's in our apparel. It's in our cars. It's in our electronics goods. It's ubiquitous around our society, and it's and it's been demonized. There's a lot of problems with plastics. <laughs> and now it's in our oceans. It's in our oceans. And so over the past 10 years that we've been in this, there's been a lot of public awareness and outcry about the problems with plastics. And so when we looked at the algae, and we found that the algae had natural thermoplastic properties, that were associated with this protein. Light bulb went off. The light bulb went off. And we looked at ways that we could use that algae biomass in its natural, unrefined state and to use that to displace a petroleum-based, very carbon-intensive material like polyethylene or polypropylene. 
Okay, so now you're making the transition from biofuels to plastics. We went from biofuels to biomaterials. And so we've actually started blending the algae with polymers and finding that we could provide suitable material properties that could be used in a range of different products. Okay, so I know right now Bloom is primarily in footwear, but where did you start off with? So our initial idea was actually flower pots, biodegradable flower pots. Flower pots. And unfortunately for us, it was a commercial failure. You had to start somewhere, though. So we switched and really focused our business in 2016 on using the blue materials in foams and molded products targeted at footwear. We found that footwear brands had strong sustainability initiatives like other brands in the fashion industry to replace and improve the sustainable, the sustainable materials in their products. And a lot more people buy shoes than flower pots. There is a huge market for shoes. There's over 25 billion pairs of shoes made every year. And there's a, and the brands that are in the space, they are, I would say, uh, at the leading edge of sustainability. And by integrating the Bloom environmental restoration story into our, our customers' marketing campaigns, that instilled real value into their brand and really built some momentum around utilizing sustainable materials in their products. So obviously, Bloom's work has been focused around sustainability. Why is that so important now? Well, 10 years ago, I don't think it was as important. And we really struggled in the early days to find brands that aligned with our mission and vision for the future of using algae as a sustainable resource. But over the past three to five years, we've seen an enormous increase in the number of brands making big commitments to using sustainable materials, recycled materials, and overall reducing their impacts on the environment. I, mean, I, I think this is because the global awareness around climate change, ocean plastics, uh, the challenges with recycling and landfills filling up, all these things are combining with this new generation of consumers. Your millennials and your Gen Zs are no longer complacent with the status quo. They want brands to act and be responsible in how they make products. And products need to have supportive missions behind them. They need to be providing some value besides just more stuff in the world. So I feel, and I think Bloom as a whole feels, that now is the time for adoption and progression within the sustainability movement and I'm excited to work with you over the coming episodes to really d uh, do the deep dive into new materials, new applications, and some of these brand partners that we have around the world that are adopting the Bloom Sustainable Materials and sharing their journey with you. Yeah, I'm excited to get into this, talk with the brands that Bloom is working with, see how brands have progressed in their sustainability journeys. It's going to be incredible. I hope you guys can tune in check it out. Ryan, thank you for talking with me today. I enjoyed it. Thank you, John. It's been a pleasure. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions or if you have an interesting topic that you'd like us to talk about, leave it in the comments below. If you like content like this, please consider subscribing. We'll see you next time in the Bloom Room.